Good evening, music lovers. I'm Dan. Welcome to Sound Booth Sessions here at Sellersville Theater. This is, of course, our live stream show, our weekly live stream series, where we feature a concert in conversation with one of our favorite acts. We're thrilled to have you here in the comments section. Please say hello. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. And uh, of course, all throughout the show, please, uh, if you have questions for our wonderful band this evening, please submit them in the comments section. Uh, before we get to the music, I'd like to give a special welcome and a special thank you to the Sellersville Theater members who are joining us this evening. Our members and our sponsors, of course, are our uh, major lifeline year in and year out. Uh, right now, they are literally keeping the lights on and the music playing. So we could not do any of this without the Sellersville Theater members and sponsors. So thank you guys. Uh, some, of our, some of our sponsors who are making tonight's show pos possible are Threadies. Thank you to Threadies, really cool clothes, and a and Subaru. Uh, I drive a Subaru and I love it. So there you go. I was not paid to say that. Um, <laughs> of course, uh, uh, friends, uh, this evening's, you didn't need to buy a ticket to watch this evening's show. But that does not mean this evening's concert is for free. No, uh, here at Sound Booth Sessions, we believe that uh, uh, you know the the talented folks who are providing this show for you this evening, working so hard, um, uh, you know, do deserve to be compensated for their work. And uh, and here you get to decide what this show is worth to you. Um, so that means that uh, you know, if times are hard for you, uh, we hope that you will support the show with your clicks and your likes and your hearts and your emojis and you know make it make it rain emojis in the comments section uh, and your comments and submit your questions and invite your friends to watch the show uh, and do everything you can please to uh, to make sure that this great music gets out there and uh, help propagate it through the internet and uh, of course, it does also mean that if you are a millionaire, then uh, we hope that this evening's show uh, is worth about fifty thousand dollars to you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, right. Um, so again, uh, when when it comes time for you to uh, to click and comment and also contribute, there are links uh, down below in the comments section. Down at the very bottom is pinned a very helpful comment that has all of the Venmo and PayPal information for both Hambone Relay and Sellersville Theater. Uh, all the contributions this evening will be split between both entities. And, uh, you know, we very much appreciate your support. So thank you very much for your clicks, your comments, and your contributions. And now to the music. Uh, can't wait to hear these guys play. They are a ton of fun. You've seen them here at Sellersville Theater uh, with uh, Brian Auger's Oblivion Express and with the wonderful Bumper Jacksons. And most recently, if you're a member, you will recognize them from, I think it was last year's members party. Was it two years ago? Last, last, last year's. Last year's members party. Um, so folks, uh, get your clickers over the clapping emoji and uh, start clicking feverishly <laughs> to welcome Hambone Relay. Thank you. 
Well, hey there, Hambone Relay. What's up? Hey. How are you guys? We're not doing too bad, uh, shabby. Uh, just coming in from the rain. Yeah. Just doing our thing. Hope you guys are doing all right online. Uh, oh, staying they're doing dry. great online. Let's see. Let me tell you how everybody's doing out here. Uh, we got lots of clapping, lots of big smile. Patrick Hickey found a really big smiley face that he's posted a few times. No. Oh. It's looking good. A bunch of hearts. Welcome, friends. Welcome, members and sponsors. Uh, Bill Slade, I love this band. Saw them, loved them, was looking forward to this since it was announced. Oh, well, thanks, Bill. Fantastic. Lad Hoover, nice to see you in there, says, sounds great. Adam K. Line says, yeah, Luke Farrakhani. So <laughs> let's introduce the guys, everybody. Let's actually, let's, uh, let's go around the circle and in the triangle and say hello to everybody. Who do we have up there? So... I'm, uh, I'm Mark Brown. Hello, Mark Brown. How's it going? Hey, I'm Rob. I'm playing drums. Hello, and I'm Rob. Luke, and I'm playing guitar. Hello, Luke. Guys, do you, uh, what, what is a Hambone Relay? What exactly <laughs> is that? Well, um, we don't really know. <laughs> 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 There's no real answer it's, to this question. Yeah, this, it's, a, it's, a, it's a trick question. Trick um, question. Well, where, where did it come from? It, uh, our our uh, original drummer a long time ago uh, came up with the name, and it, it was actually a placeholder because we were like, hey, we have our first gig and we don't have a name. Uh -huh. What do you guys want to call ourselves? He was like, uh, Hambone Relay. Hambone Relay. <laughs> and uh, we just kind of, we were like, we, it just stuck. We couldn't think of anything better. <laughs> uh -huh. and, uh, um, and then we got a website, and we're like, well, should we, we get, change the website? Nah, it's cool. We'll just leave it. And it's it kind of stuck, you know. So you know, what's funny is the name actually got us a couple gigs. Well, the band in the beginning got a couple gigs. We got right. booked to do a bacon festival because bacon we were called. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where it is. Yeah, music. It was at Music Fest Cafe oh, in Bethlehem. In Bethlehem. Yeah. What a gig! <laughs> is it like all the bacon you can eat? Well, so yeah, it was. It was like bacon flavored ice cream, bacon flavored everything. They had bacon flavored beer. It was awesome, except. We were playing while everyone was eating, and when we got, they're like, "Oh, when you guys are done, just come help yourself." All the bacon was gone. <laughs> oh my! So gosh. we got no bacon that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you got a gig out of the name, so that's pretty good. It's a fun gig, though. Saddest yeah. story I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted bacon, man. Yeah. You know? And so, so how did the band uh, get started? Uh, we started, I guess, 20, 2013, I guess. Um, we started just jamming. We all like hooked up on uh, like. One of those online band sites, you know, you get together and jam, and we just started jamming uh, like once a week. Right. And we started out as a soul live cover band. Oh no way! <laughs> like all, I think the first ten songs we learned were all soul live songs. Oh, that's the best. So, um, and then from there we kind of we started writing our own music. So. Well, it's been a it's been a good ride ever since, guys. I've been enjoying your music. I've uh, been enjoying the CDs that you put out. Um, there are uh, a, a few uh, singles that you've been releasing. You've been doing, um, it seems like, once a month. Is that like an official, you're going to do it once a month? Yeah, we're, tr like we're trying to. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. um, and in fact, the first song we just played, Whiskey Jar, was the sure. first single we released um, right around the time when the, what was it, April we released that, Rob? Yeah. Yeah, it was around April when like the lockdown kind of was in full force. So that you know, we're like, what are we gonna do? So we wrote that tune and we recorded it all remotely, um, and then everybody sent their tracks to me and I mixed it, and mastered it, and um, that, so. W was it a was it a song that you had been playing already, or was it brand new as of the quarantine? It was brand new as of the. It was I I wrote the 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 melody and then just sent it to everybody, and we just kind of. I, I, and, I, and I, you know, I said, "Hey, Luke, come up with a cool guitar part for this." Yeah. You know, and uh, and we we have another guitar player that plays with us sometimes, Jordan August, and he came up with like a cool psychedelic part that that you'll hear in the track too. And um, and then Rob came up with his drum part, and then we all kind of just put it all together. That's fantastic. Now, is that your typical process? Is it, does it usually start with you, Mark? With uh, the... Yeah, I've written most of the songs. Rob's written a couple tunes too. Um, usually, whoever the songwriter is brings it to like band practice. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we um, everyone contributes their own thing. Like I'll, I'll bring like a melody. I, we write tunes a lot like they're jazz tunes, like a, a melody and chords, uh -huh. uh, and like a form. And then so I'll bring it to rehearsal, and then say, okay, Luke, what do you think? You know, and we'll kind of like combine our ideas, and Luke will come up with a cool guitar part, you know, or Rob will come up with a cool beat, or whatever, you know. <laughs> or whatever. whatever. <laughs> That's the part that gets me going. Yeah, a beat or whatever. A beat or whatever. A beat yeah. or whatever. Just something. He's, he's good. He's good at that though. Are, now, are you transcribing this? Are you uh, communicating in, through notation, or is it just like you play it, play it for each other? Um, so, so I try to write stuff out, but a lot of times, I think a lot of our better songs are just we just they're just I just play an idea. Like, yeah. like I record stuff on like my cell phone, or like on I have like you know on GarageBand on your Mac or whatever, and just send an MP3 to everybody, and then they they listen to it, and then we we get together at rehearsal, and we all kind of just. Come right, we'll, we'll try a bunch of ideas out in like different versions of the song, and then eventually we'll settle on one idea and then let it grow from there. Or at least that's how m many of the songs have grown since I've been in the band. Yeah, and they always evolve. Like we start playing them live, and then by the time we go to the studio, we, I like to play a song live for like a few months before we record it, you know, mm -hmm. at least. And by the time we hit the studio, it's like a totally different song, <laughs> you know. We didn't have the option to do that this time. Yeah, I, know. Mark yeah, I was going to say, how, how is that different now that, uh, you know, this, so this, this, that song that you played is called, is that Whiskey Jar? Yeah. That was Whiskey Jar. So, so the writing process for that, uh, it, it was the same deal. You just emailed it back and forth. You just were missing the in-person band practice? Basically, yeah. I, I just sent, I sent like the basic tracks with like a fake drum beat yeah. like that I created. And then I, you know, had Rob like, you know, redo the drums and we all just kind of sent it around and kicked ideas around via email or text, you know. Love it. Yeah. Did you ever try to do like a Zoom, uh, one of the Zoom band practice? <laughs> oh, just to, no. Just to see no. if the latency was... We've had Zoom yeah, happy hours, though. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, the latency's too bad. It just wouldn't work, especially for like the organ and the drums being transferred Definitely not. online. There are some programs that are getting really close. I couldn't name them for you, but I'm sure if you Google search something, you, you could find something that's really close. If you just wanted to write with a few people, right? Very cool, guys. Well, let's uh, let's get into it. Give us uh, what's what's the next one? This next song is called uh, "Dust Bowl Circus," which I, uh, I wrote. Um, Rob on the drums here, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, it's actually the opening track off our last full record. Uh, the song is called "Dust Bowl Circus" off of "Say Hi to Earl." Say hi to Earl. Let's hear it. Thank you. 
Very cool. We love it, man. Dust Bowl Circus. Dust Bowl Circus. So now, wait, okay, so when you're writing these instrumental tunes, where do the names come from? Uh, well, Mark. <laughs> That's the nice thing about stuff? being an instrumental band. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Actually, usually the goofier the name, the better it does. Actually, so, well, so, so some of the titles, like for the, for instance, um, the the first song, "Whiskey Jar," is actually named after a club that we love to play, that we were doing a residency at. It's in Charlottesville, uh, Charlottesville, Virginia, uh -huh. called the Whiskey Jar. Okay. And uh, we had like a whole year-long monthly residency. You know, of course, canceled now, um, but we love that room. So that that's that song is named after that club. But I don't know about, wh where's the Dust Bowl Circus come from? I have no Just idea. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, I was drinking a little heavily, and that's where the name probably came from, <laughs> to be 100% honest. Well, that's all right. Just a night of drunkly musing. Anyway. Uh, let's see. Here's uh, some comments. Uh, Jana uh, Van Buskirk says, you look and sound great. Alex Elizabeth, you guys sound great. Sending love from Alex and Jordan. Oh, hey, guys. Hey. That's actually Jordan, who uh, plays with us a bunch, the other guitar player we usually play with. Oh, excellent. Well, no pressure, Zach. <laughs> um, <laughs> and Nancy Dudak says, hi, Hambone. Dennis and Nancy are here. Lots of claps. That's awesome. More smiley faces from Patrick. Patrick, <laughs> that's the biggest smiley face. And then a big old metal horns. Um, someone's asking, how do we send money? Thank you very much, Nancy, for asking that question. Uh, if, you, if you will uh, head over to the comments section, way down at the bottom of the comments, there's a pinned comment. And in that pinned comment are all of the, uh, the various tip jars that you can, can, can uh, it's easy for me to say, contribute to this evening, uh, Venmo and PayPal for uh, Hambone Relay. There's a Venmo for Sellersville Theater. Uh, and if you... Uh, you know, open up a new browser window. You can click on over there and contribute. Um, let's see. Den Denise Will says, glad this show is still happening. Love the rhythms. Miss being there. Yes, Denise, we miss you too. Um, here we go. Thank you, Denise. Appreciate you. So, guys, I, I have heard uh, some of these new singles. Uh, I think particularly uh, When the Levee Breaks was very cool. Heard it on WXPN. Oh, right on. Um, those guys are great. Yeah, we love XPN. So tell me, why, um, why when the levee breaks? Why, why, uh, why cover that? Uh, well, we, <laughs> we were, we, we so uh, the, uh, the girl that sings on that tune, Rachel Ann Morgan, um, she's from Baltimore, and we've done a bunch of shows with her band. Um, and uh, we were looking for something. We wanted to do something to showcase her. And we love Led Zeppelin, and we we're like, "What would be a great song for Rachel to sing?" And oh, yeah. and she kills it on that thing. So um, that was our, I think that was our number one choice of tunes. We you know we kicked around some ideas, but Levy Breaks was perfect for her. Well, it's such a great song, and and she sounds great on it. Yeah, we actually had a friend of ours uh, from the band Darla from Philly, uh, Will Shade, come and sit in on a saxophone with us on that track as well. The, the tenor saxophone you hear in the beginning is actually Will, and uh, he's fabulous. Yeah, he's great. Killed it. A lot of great saxophonists in the in the Philly area. Hell yeah. Oh, for sure. There's so many great jazz programs in the city, and that's kind of sure. where they're all from. Great players. Um, well, I shouldn't have asked about that song because I don't think we're going to play it today, right? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have the singer. <laughs> yeah, have yeah to... we don't have Rachel tonight. <laughs> all right. Well, sorry about that. So uh, g g tell us about this next song, guys. Uh, so the next song is called uh, We Gonna, we Gonna Make It Right. And uh, this is off our uh, second album, second full-length album called Free Hugs. Um, it's kind of like, so, it's kind of like a, like kind of like a chill, funky groove, like a little New Orleans-y. I was kind of listening to some Wolfpack, some early Wolfpack when I wrote this song, too. Um, so there's a little bit of that, uh, a lot of New Orleans style in it, and uh, the title, again, is just, you know, I don't know, just sounded cool. <laughs> but that's all it takes. That's right.
It sounds so good, guys. Just, just, just give us another one.
Oh my goodness. <laughs> Friends, the crowd are going wild. Let me Thank share you. some of this with you. Mm. <laughs> that was our, uh, the slow song was a uh, new soul tune. And uh, we kind of segued into uh, Star Climber. Star Climber. Gorgeous. Love it. Bill Slade's very happy. Jam, jazz, soul, now blues. Got it all tonight. Jerry Forstatter has you on his 12-foot 4K screen on three-way Gentil X. Holy cow. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Wowza. Wowzer, great audio, crystal video, sweet, spectacular. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> That's quite a setup you got there, Jerry. Send a, send a picture of that if you, <laughs> if you don't mind. Adam K. Line, you guys really know how to hit me right in the ham bone. <laughs> <laughs> Big laugh from the guys in the band. So crispy from Keith Seddon. Oh, that's my boy, Keith. Jerry Firstadder asks, does the spinning Leslie require a mask? (laughs) Jeff Tate, you guys sound so good. Guys, so tell me, how has the quarantine affected your productivity? I mean, you you mentioned that you uh, have been sending tracks back and forth. Um, Generally speaking, are you feeling more productive in this time or less productive in this time? Uh, Rob, what do you think? For me, it depends on the day. You know, with, with the COVID and everything, um, inspiration comes and goes very fast sometimes. For five or six, six days, you may be practicing, feeling really good, writing, sending stuff to the band, and then you might take a week off and like, I have nothing to give, you know. Yeah. I'm not feeling inspired by staying inside my house, but it comes and goes, but we have to be, we have to be kind to ourselves and know that this is the way it is for a while, you know. Yeah. Um, when when this when the whole thing started, you know, I know I was. It was very hard. We had a lot of gigs. We had like a, a long southern tour scheduled, mm. and that that got oh, canceled. Man. And we had we have almost a hundred shows this year, and, and we're probably not going to play maybe one of them, two of them. You know. I mean, we probably so, play like ten, yeah. <laughs> maybe. So like you know, it was so when this, when it first happened, it was really tough to be productive at all. I I. I I played a lot of Madden, no big deal. <laughs> Watched a lot of horror films and yeah. played a lot of PlayStation. Sure, um, but you know, as time went on, we started we started working on Wh- Whiskey Jar and then other tunes and, and coming up with ideas to keep ourselves going. And I know I've been I know Rob's been pra- we've all been practicing a lot, you know. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, and and writing too. Like I've just started writing um, uh, again a lot. Like so one of the so we play a lot of shows per year, and one of the downfalls of being in a touring band that tours a lot is you don't have time to write. Um, wow. We don't do, I mean, we don't write We don't write on the road, you know what I mean? So um, some guys do, but we don't. So okay. it's nice to have some free, some time to do that, you know what I mean? So like I've been like focusing on writing a bunch of new stuff and hopefully we'll have like a new album when this is all over, you know? Oh, that'd be great. So, Luke, have you been productive? <laughs> Thanks for asking, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I echo what you guys are saying. Um, <clears throat> been listening a lot, which has been fun. You can kind of listen to whatever you want when you don't have to, you know, learn tunes and be in the whole hustle bustle of everything. So right. it's been fun. Um, been doing remote recording with other people too, so that's been cool. Yeah. Getting the home recording thing together sure. and you kind of get your sound and different perspectives that you don't normally get. So yeah, so it's been good that way, but for sure tough to keep moving at some sometimes. But right. Yeah. A lot of ups and downs. You know, a couple yeah. days are great, and then you have one day that you're like, ugh. <laughs> You know? Right, but I mean, it's the case for everybody at this point. You know, yeah. it's just being kind to yourself and know this. This is what we're going to be going through for a little while. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's interesting to hear how how all the artists are reacting to uh, to this time at home. And you know, it, of course, it hits everybody in different ways. And as you said, on different days. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, well, one of the one of the projects that you guys have going on that that I've been really enjoying in this quarantine is uh, is your podcast. And uh, this, there's a great podcast that Hambone Relay does. It's called Dude Check This Out, a music podcast. <laughs> and, uh, and actually, I've, I've used it as research for some of our earlier sound booth sessions. As I, I'd be looking online to sort of see what, uh, you know, catch up on the interviews and podcasts that these other, uh, like Emily Drinker have, has done. And it led me to you guys, and, and uh, it's been a tremendous resource. Um, when did you start that podcast, and what was your intention uh, going in? Because 
it's it's great. It's it's a great podcast, and I, I highly recommend checking it Thanks, out. Thanks, man. Thank we, we started in November of 2018. Okay. Uh, we basically decided that we we talk about music so much on the road. It's like we should just do a podcast. I sure. feel like we'd be able to fill an hour, and sure enough, we fill like almost two <laughs> every episode. And then Mark has to edit it all down. <laughs> um, but we've basically brought on a bunch of friends, and then we got to meet new people, which they've become friends. It's been a very nice tool, and also sharing information and people who listen in can can li- like try we try to explain what's happening. Like we we talk like how we book different shows okay. or how we advertise a different like markets and things and also just the music who were really listening to at the time and uh people seem to really like seeing behind the curtain yeah absolutely and uh yeah i think we've had 30 episodes we just recently put out all we had the four of us uh including jordan who's not with us today do um we did a top tens of basically the 60s 70s 80s 90s 2000s and 2010s and we basically it's a three three hours for every uh oh my god podcast <laughs> they're like four they're like four dude they're are long. they really they're long they, they they're are long, long. Um, but it's yeah, it's like we, we we each do our we go like round robin, you know, number ten in our t- you know ten album, you know, number ten of the nineties or whatever, and it's a uh, it's it's pretty h- hilarious, <laughs> and we in, in one episode we did we ate chicken wings with different hot sauces. We tried to do like oh, the, yeah. hot, the hot ones, <laughs> the hot ones <laughs> with the uh, the the show. I, I love we, that show. I think we've, we, Sean we, Evans. Yeah, he's the polished best. up a bottle of scotch too in that episode. So he's actually a great interviewer. If you he's guys get a chance, watch incredible. those shows. Incredible, he's a great interviewer. Yeah, like he gets those questions where artists go, "Excuse me, how did you know that?" And so we, that was kind of like a model for me when we were interviewing some of these artists that we didn't know. It's like let's really go in the past and see what we can dig up. Yeah. And sometimes we surprise them. It's kind of nice. Yeah. So how? Do, well, that that leads me to this. I mean, how do you prepare to talk to? To your act, like when when you have somebody in, um, you know how much research are you doing? Do you just already know them from you know your personal lives, or um, like what's your what's your preparation like to go in to talk to somebody? Well, for people that we know, it's actually kind of nice because you know so much about them, you can you get to dive deeper with your time. Sure, you know, and with somebody you don't know, you really try to cover the main basis for them, but try to really understand where they've come from as an artist. Like oh. um, I'm trying to think, we had Kirby Cybert on, who we really didn't know. And he's a fantastic guitar player, songwriter. And then we found out he's playing with like Mo, Mo Lauda and the Humble and oh, where yeah. he comes from. And that's just one example. But every episode, we find out a lot about these artists. Even if we try to come prepared, the conversation goes a totally different way. And that's great because it's exciting. Yeah, it's always it's fun for the audience to sort of follow in those actual organic conversations, you know, where it just sounds like you're you're just chatting with a friend. Yeah, oh, we, yeah. we had Kirby on on this show and that was where I, I looked for him and found you guys, uh, your your podcast, and was like, oh, how cool is this? Get to spend a few hours with him first and hear some of his stuff. Yeah, he's um, fantastic. He really is. Now, you mentioned editing. Who does your uh, your podcast editing? I do. And how much do you love that process? Oh, it's great. <laughs> Honestly, so it wasn't too, it's not too bad with like some of the, the guests we've had, but... <laughs> Our top ten episodes are like four or five hours unedited, you know. Right. So it's a lot of material to go through, and <laughs> it's great. Now tell it's me, what what is it that you're that you're editing? Are you just sort of taking out pauses and ums and errs and um, sort of double starts or? So uh, no, well, so like sometimes, <laughs> sometimes trying to make <laughs> sorry, trying well, to make us not sound stupid. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> a- actually, there there are moments where like somebody will say something that's like factually inaccurate or or they can't find a fact about a album or something so i'll like look it up and then i'll like cut in like with me saying something about that album uh, or or like if we've been drink like a couple of episodes we polished off a bottle of scotch so like yeah there's there's some stuff that doesn't need that the audience doesn't need to hear that we're just like rambling and you know or i shouldn't say we i i'm uh, it's probably me but i say some <laughs> dumb things so <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so like just like that. I don't cut out a lot of the ums and errs unless there's a really long silence, yes. you know what I mean? Right. Like sometimes we'll have a guest that, that you ask them a question and it takes them a while to, to think of their answer. So I'll cut that out. But Which is why we usually br- bring alcohol for them or something, just to <laughs> yeah. loosen it up so it <laughs> is like a conversation, yeah. you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I spent some time editing a podcast, and it, I've always found that it's amazing how much more articulate somebody sounds when you just kind of shorten their response getting rid of the pauses and the ums and the errs and the yep. and all that stuff and all of a sudden it's like oh there was like a beautifully stated point in there that <laughs> was hiding um, that's, uh, 
So uh, yeah, so the last episode I saw was the top ten of the t- of the two thousands, um, and you were talking that there's the twenty tens. Is the, is there any uh, spoilers that you can give us? Any sneak peeks? Anybody have a particularly controversial response? Twenty tens. I'm trying to remember because we did record that one a second ago. It's been a while. But yeah. um, I think there was a weird it, uh, happenstance where like a couple of our a couple of us had the same records in the top ten, and that becomes what we call the Hall of Fame. So if two people mention the same record in the, their top ten, then that that album becomes a part of the Hall of Fame. And there's like a list of those. Yeah, it's like the um, Hamlin gotcha. Relay Hall of Fame of albums, you know? Like like who's who's uh, who's already in? Who's already been inducted? Uh, Prince. There's, Prince. There, there's a Bruce. There's definitely a Bruce Springsteen album. De- there. Yeah. Great. Uh, John Mayer, maybe. Uh, the Meters. The Meters. Okay. Dark Side. I think Dark Side of the Moon. Pa- Dark Side of the Moon made it in. Made it. And in 2010s, uh, we have a, a friend and a great artist named Chris Jacobs who was in a lot of our top tens, and he got in there. And and I'm trying to think did of he, anybody else. He, did he make the Hall of Fame? I think he probably yeah, did. He did. Yeah, he yeah. did. So. Yeah, there's like a lot of them. But uh, in terms of spoilers, uh, Jordan loves fish, so of course yes. there was a fish well, record or two. Lots of, lots of fish talk. Very good. <laughs> Jordan, in the comments, can you tell everybody who your top fish album was? I forget yeah. who it was. Go I'm ahead. Very, I'm, I am curious to hear who who the, who the favorite fish album uh, is. Anyway, but yeah, we really enjoy it, and uh, we're, we're gonna have some more stuff coming out soon. Yeah, more episodes on the way. Great, sure. can't wait to hear them, uh, friends. In the comments section, uh, thank you for your comments, and thank you. If you have some questions for the guys, please send them in, and if I see them, I'll ask them. Um, uh, not see the band, I'll ask. If I see your question, I'll, <laughs> ask, I'll ask the question. Um, please, while you're clicking around, make sure to head on over to the band's website, which is conveniently up on your screen. Head on over there to find the band's music and uh, hear about their upcoming shows. You have a, a upcoming live show in Lancaster, gentlemen, w- uh, on August 22nd. Is that right? Yeah, and we're, we're a quartet for that one, so Jordan will be on that one with us, too. Um, Beautiful. And uh, it's yeah, it's at the shops at Belmont. It's an outdoor gig. It's a it's it's a long one, so we're gonna be doing some covers too. Um, but yeah, it's it's I think it's our first live audience show since March, right? Have we done? I oh, think that sounds right. Well, no, in July we did the we did the distillery oh, yeah. in Reading, yeah. but um, but yeah, so we, uh, we've never played there before. Um, usually when we, when we play Lancaster, we play a club called Telus 360. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 an outdoor gig. Uh, in like a like a shopping quad area, you know, and there's like a stage and lights and sound, so sure. it should be a lot of fun. Very Looking cool. Looking forward to it. But uh, speaking of venues, if you don't mind me saying, there is a bill that's being talked about uh, right now to save music venues yes. or to at least help them out. Please, if you guys online can uh, Google it and try to contribute towards that, or talk to your local state representative to uh, see if there's any way you can help. Yes, and that's hashtag Save Our Stages. Yes. Uh, the Niva. Uh, because yeah. without them, we would be absolutely nothing playing basement shows. And I don't know if an organ trio would do well in a basement show, to be 100% honest. It would be Less a bit loud. <laughs> <laughs> Last time I played an or- uh, a basement show, someone dumped a rum and coke in my draw bars. <laughs> so, it, was, it was great. It was great. I boycott. Well, thank you, thank you for that plug. And, uh, and let's, uh, let's do another tune. Speaking of covers, this is a cover you may know. If you know the words, sing at home.
Absolutely gorgeous. Thanks, man. That's a change is gonna come. Fabulous song. Sam Cook. Sam Cook. Keep it going, guys. It sounds so good.
Wow. That was uh, 10th and Market. That's right. 10th and Market off the amazing album. Uh, it was This one is off Free Hugs, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, Free Hugs. There it is. I love that record. Thank you so much. Really proud of that one. Um, we put that out, I think, in 2016. Is that right? 2016, yeah. Yeah, we toured a lot on that record, and then we fi- finally put out Earl about two years after that. Three years, 2019. That's right. Whoa, wow, yeah. Right. I didn't realize that. Okay. Very good, guys. So uh, so you mentioned uh, there might be a new record uh, in the works? Yeah, I mean, we, we've, been, we've been writing remotely, and, you know, like, I, I've been really, like, coming up with some stuff, and I know Rob's been working on some stuff. So we haven't really, like, the only thing that's really been recorded original-wise so far is that tune, Whiskey Jar, but right. uh, we've got a lot of stuff that we're, we're kind of, like... An extra guac is out, too. On. Oh, an extra, that's right. And Jordan wrote a tune called Extra Guac, which just which released... Uh, I guess last month, right? Yeah, it was the end of July. Yeah, middle so of July. so uh, so there's, there's two two originals we've done so far. So I love that. Yeah, yeah. we're actually re- releasing us. Okay, we're releasing a new live version of uh, one of our songs called "Here Come the Fuzz," which we're gonna play uh, later. But uh, yeah, we're really excited about all that. Yeah, it's great. It's uh, how how is uh how, how has your writing evolved over time? I'm wondering, like, as you listen back to your uh, to your older records, Mark, like what. Uh, I, I think you're, you you were the original m- a member of this group, right? Yeah, I mean, not yeah. not the other. So as you listen back to that first record, you know what what are some changes you hear in uh, in your own writing and, and and the band's development over time? I think uh, well, we start as I said before, we started as kind of like a soul live cover right, band. Sure, so that sure, first the, the first self titled record we did um, was very jazz soul funk trio. Not so much soul, but very, very, it was very jazz heavy, very like Robert Walter, Stanton Moore trio, mm-hmm. uh, soul live. And then from there, I think we've we've kind of evolved into more like a like a uh, like a rock, and uh, and we're a little more jammy too. Um, but you know, like there's still elements of jazz in our pl- in our writing and our playing style, but we've definitely evolved into more of like a classic rock uh, meets with like a jazz approach. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. You hear it in there. Yeah. Well, it's great stuff. It sounds wonderful. Thank um, you. Let's let's let me share some of these some more of these comments. Uh, Jerry Forstatter is wondering if he can dance in the streets. Um, yes, please. Uh, yeah, please do. Uh, Patrick Hickey is giving some interesting faces. Uh, there was uh, some swirly eyes. There was a, I think. I think he thought that the chatting went a little long and gave us some snores <laughs> a little, <laughs> little while ago. Uh, appreciate your honesty, of course, my friend over there. Um, but now he's got lots of people clapping. Uh, we'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. Uh, here we go. Let's see. Uh, let's see. A lot of people saying they, they wish they could be here, and they're looking forward to coming back. John Seaton sounds great. Patrick Hickey asks, how did my wife get on that album cover? <laughs> <laughs> referring to free hugs yes i put it up on the screen um very good guys the the album art is gorgeous can you can you shout out your uh your your artist who who came up with uh, with some of these beautiful covers uh yes <laughs> so the artist's name we've actually never met him he's in he's in i believe uh the ukraine and his no name kidding. is his name is Bo- <laughs> the name that he wanted to be credited as was Balthazar. Oh, that's amazing. And <laughs> so, and which records did he did he work on? He just did he did uh free hugs only. Free hugs. And then okay. uh Bridget uh Simino K- did uh say hi to Earl. And she's in Baltimore. Yeah, she's a uh, she does a lot of murals and stuff in Baltimore. We've, we we saw a couple of her jazz murals like jazz based like in a club and it's really like blue and purple hue and we wanted something very similar. And that's kind of where the Earl uh a cover came to be. Yeah, very very cool artwork. All right, gentlemen. Let's uh, let's hear a few more. All right. There's another tune that Rob wrote called "Roxy." Thank you. 
Roxy, off Say Hi to Earl. Beautiful, guys. Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. Hope you all online are having a lot of fun, either chilling or dancing with us. They sure seem to be. They're clapping. Yay. Patrick is snoozing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Pat. I think he means that complimentarily. I'm not sure. I, I, maybe he means it's got good vibes. <laughs> <laughs> it's being a smart ass. Keep it going, guys. It sounds so good. Thank you. 
goodness. Here come the fuzz. Guys, <laughs> here come the fuzz. What a song. That was incredible. Off of Earl, another great one from a great record. Guys, this has been an absolute delight. We're honored that you guys had us. Yeah, Thank you so us. much for being here. Um, let me, uh, let's cut back over here. Uh, that was a real treat, guys. Thank you so much. Um, so let's see. We've heard that you have a, uh, a live show in Lancaster coming up. Uh, you're going to be dropping another single at the end of August. Uh, did we talk about that? What's, what's the new single coming out? It's going to be uh, that song, but a live version with our friends in the band Trap Rabbit and Becca from the band Solar Circuit. Oh, man. Um, so it's a big collaboration at a place called The Farm in Westchester, right? Yeah. That was that's where the studio is and we got our friend Skylar to shoot the whole thing. Skylar Jenkins? Yeah, that's right. Get out of here. Yeah, he's, he's everywhere. He's one of our best buddies and um he recorded the whole thing and it's about nine minutes, ten minutes. It's wow. Long. It's long. Two drummers, four was there four keyboard players? Three. Three keyboard players. So Luke's and then one guitar. guitar. One. <laughs> 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 that sounds fantastic. Can't wait to hear that. That'll be out, you said the end of August, so yep. Not that much longer to wait. No. Um, you said you got a, another episode of your podcast that's going to be coming out, uh, the 2010s, the best of 2010s. <laughs> Can't wait to hear what made the cut. There are going to be some surprises in there. Some surprises. Yeah. Um, it, guys, this, is, uh, this has been so fantastic. So thank you very much for being here, and uh, I appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. And we yes, want to thank, thank uh, Sellersville and all the people, the members from Sellersville and uh, all the people that have come to see us play here uh, when we opened for Brian and, um, oh my God, I'm forgetting everybody now. Uh, but every Bumper Jackson. Brian and yeah, Bumper. all the shows <laughs> that we've uh, opened for. Thank you guys so much. And uh, we hope you guys are staying safe and make sure to uh, pray for a good 2021. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. 2021 will be the year that 2020 was supposed to be, right? I agree. I sure hope so. And then hashtag go save our stages or save our stages. Amen. Save our stages, friends. This is we're coming close to the uh, to the very end of the show here, so you have uh, you have just a little bit of time left to make your way over if you haven't already. And uh, please show everyone involved with the production tonight how much this show meant to you. We uh, we certainly appreciate it if you do that. You've been very active with your clicks and your comments. Thank you very much uh, uh, in advance for your contributions, guys. Take us out of here.
ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Hambone Relay. I hope you enjoyed that show uh, even a fraction as much as I did. I was having a blast. Um, thank you so much to Hambone Relay for their amazing music. Uh, that was Jeremy Hoban doing the uh, camera work for you this evening. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah, Allison buddy. Vega's in the comments section. She's our marketing director, and uh, and she's been answering all of your questions and helping you out. Lots of claps, lots of heart faces. Patrick Hickey says, wow, I think we won him over, guys. Awesome jam. He woke up for that last one. Uh, friends, thank you for being here. Um, if you want to support Hambone Relay and Sellersville Theater, please head on over and, uh, and make some contributions. Please visit the guys on their website, hambonerelay.com, and, uh, and watch out for, for that uh, new single dropping at the end of August. Uh, guys, uh, we will see you tomorrow night here on Sound Booth Sessions. We have the amazing Gary Hoey, and of course, we'll be back again next week. Thank you for being here with us. Have a good night.